hey what's up youtube welcome back to the closet welcome back to the christopher moon channel or show whatever and welcome back to another thought i wanted to have with you about after jail about after i got through the scariest part of what I thought was, you know, the scariest part of this process, this DUI process. And if you heard the video I did earlier about going to jail and doing jail for time for my second DUI, then good. Uh, I'd link it, but I don't know how. And, you know, really, I'm not that big. You can find it, it's in there. But uh, after jail, after that big scary mess and just let me recap i uh got my second dui um went to court and they gave me the uh bare minimum sentence that was allotted for somebody who got their second dui within five years and that was 30 days incarcerated and for me, I was able to take the, uh, the weekend program. That was something available in Arapahoe County, Colorado at the time of my DUI. And it was pretty cool, you know. In the video, I, I said that, uh, you know, they gave me the 30 days and I went in for one weekend and checked out, went to work, went in for the second weekend, checked out and the jail told me that I was done due to my good behavior, overpopulation and crowding, have a nice life, you know, don't get in any more trouble. So, you know, that was it. Pretty good experience for this guy, you know, and, and I can't say that's gonna be the same, you know, for everybody, you know, I don't know what's attached to your ticket. I don't know what prior things you have and that's something you got to look at too is like do you have a lot of priors you know like at least you have the you know DUI and they look at that and, and they say that's bad but that's kind of like a moving violation that you know they're just turning you into a revenue stream if it was you know you knocked off a 7-eleven you know you went and uh, you know stole some cheeseburgers at McDonald's you pulled your sister's hair, you know, you kicked a cat. They're going to know and they're going to, the judge is going to look at all that and say, man, this guy's a cat kicker. Heck no. Give him, you know, give him as much as we can give. You know, people are people and, you know, things affect them. You know, keep that in mind. You know, the judge isn't just, he's not just a judge, she, whoever. It's a person that is going to respond to things that they see read you know whatever so just you know keep that in mind for your special day and don't worry you're gonna be okay just face it just face it you're gonna be good and uh after you know after is what i want to talk about today all the little things that you got to do after the scariest part's done now it's time for the annoying stuff and, uh, you know, actually the stuff that, you know, I, I enjoyed and, and it helped me grow a lot too, um, was this probation. And uh, probation, like, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Like, you're gonna get a probation person, like, assigned from either a third party thing or from uh, the courthouse you went to. And mine was at the court and uh, I would go see this person every month and I had to pay my dues, pay a fee every month to this person just for them to monitor me and make sure I was doing what the court said. And uh, along with that, they gave me a phone number, they gave me like a, a code and they gave me two colors, yellow and purple. And I had to call this phone number every day between the hours of midnight and like six to eight in the morning. So like, it was like this little tiny window of the day. And it kind of pissed me off too, because uh, you'd have to call, you'd have to know that eight to nine digit number every day. And then you would have to sit there and listen. And if you didn't call within that time, 
you were non-compliant and, and it just really bothered me because you know we got to rearrange everything in our lives for them once this happens you got to rearrange everything if you're working swing shifts you better wake up and call that number if you're working midnights you, you better be able to like slide over and like call you know within that time frame hopefully you know there's just a lot of stuff that you know they don't care you know you, you broke the rules they don't care you do what we say no matter how crazy it is or you know we're gonna screw you up and send you back to probation maybe back to jail you know back to the judge tell them you're not doing what you're supposed to so you just got to do it you know and then every day once I'd call that like like I already had I already had trouble with transportation you know right I was working out at the airport it's kind of hard to get out there without a car you know and then like on top of that then you got to figure a way how to get to this like center where you can like leave a urine or breath sample and give them more money you know uh, that was the most annoying part but it is you know it is something that's character building it's something that sucks it's something that you have to deal with and you can't just like complain or cry it away it's just something you deal with and it's something that makes you tougher and stronger and, and like you know it builds that stone skin you know I've got to do this okay let's do it you know you just do it it's just something you do and then on top on top of that you got the classes every week every week depending on what track you get on what letter you get I don't remember I think I had track 2 letter G letter F something like that I don't know but it was a lot it was a lot and uh, you know I was kind of upset you know once you're in there it's like uh, you know you got to see all these people you don't know you're forced to like you know buy a $30 crap book and and like you guys never read it you're just talking but I kind of learned you know in those classes that I liked those classes like I, it, it was another time for me to like grow and like hear somebody else's story you know I thought I, I had it bad because you know I had my little DUI and I had my troubles but you know it, it's something really uh, neat once you go into one of these groups and there's like you know it, a 17 year old girl just crying and spilling her her life story about you know a boyfriend troubles and like just all this stuff parents like stuff coming at them and, and you can really put together the pictures of you know what happened the night of you know when she got in trouble the the factors that drive people in general to you know run away from reality and get that drink you know and, and it's always going to be there you know even once you get done once you get done with your dui and, and you've been mia for like a year or two and then and then you come back and and somebody finds out oh Chris is he's done he can drink again oh yeah and, and they're, they're trying to pull you back they get you and they're trying to pull you back no matter what no matter how hard you fight they want you back in that bar stool next to them because it's fun right you know that's crazy we all love our friends you know but if they just want to keep pulling you back towards that look at it look at it are they really your friend or they just want somebody fun with them that can like you know vibrate at that level of misery with them that's really what it is like you know people want you to be with them on their level all the time I want I want my friends to come with me and if I'm drinking I want them drinking if I'm smoking I want them smoking you know whatever it is you know you do together birds of a exactly right so be careful with that once you get done but while you're going through once you're going through these classes and you're hearing these stories you know get get on a human level and like you can connect with it and and, and just see like 
you know, I, I really thought I was going through some stuff. And this is something that helped me get through a lot of this, was I really thought I was going through some stuff. Until I started like, you know, really listening to some of the people that came into those classes. And they became friends. They became like, you know, somebody that you could, you know, you could tell your stuff to like, oh, you know, th this happened, you know, on the night, you know, the cop did this. You, you know, you, you hear a lot of stuff, a lot of blame throwing and not a lot of, uh, you know, owning up to anything. But, you know, it's forced on you. It's state forced. So there's not a lot of people in there saying like, hey, I need help from this or that. It's more, I'm being forced to be here. I don't have an issue. This is BS. And that might be true, you know. We're all not just freaking alcoholics because we have a, a drink and get a DUI, you know. You know if you're an alcoholic. You know if you need a little help. And once you need that help, once you need something, you know it. You know it, you feel it, there's a change in your system, and you go seek it. But when somebody's holding a, a, a thing to your head and saying, if you don't do this, you know, I'm taking your freedom. I'm taking, I'm taking from you. You have to do what I say. Then people don't get the same, you know, result that they would have in that class if they didn't choose to do it themselves or if they were not open enough be open be open enough to receive everybody's pain around you collect their stories collect their stuff and, and like it helps it'll help build you up that's the mortar that's going to help build you up and build you stronger like yeah you know what i've been going through some stuff but then you start seeing that other people are going through some stuff. And then you see, you know, what causes this stuff? You know, everything, everything. And maybe you do want to go out and drink some more, do whatever. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Just, you gotta be safe. You gotta be safe, you can't, you can't get behind the wheel. You know, you just can't do it. Not anymore, not ever, not worth it. But those classes were, they gave me a lot. They gave me a lot and I enjoyed them. I met a lot of good people. And I met a couple like just people that were jerks, but you know, it was because they were blindsided. They, they didn't see it coming. They got hit with this charge and they got pulled into this class. They got told this is what they're gonna do. And they didn't give much, they didn't participate. You're gonna see that. But you don't have to be that. You can give your story. You can give whatever you have to give to these other human beings around you to not only vent and purge all that negativity, all that poison out of your system, but let them see it around you so that it kind of purges from their system too. You know, it all, it all lets out because they see that Oh, I can relate. I can relate, man. You know, something like that happened to me. And then they're purging their stuff. And it's a very healing, very, you know, great process if you let it. If you let it. Or, you know, you'd be the cool guy in the back that's all pissed off and you, you don't take anything from it. You just give them your money and you just spend your life, you know, your time sitting there mad. You know, just mad. And, and that's not going to do anything good for you or for the group you're with or for anything. Just, you know, do your best to try and enjoy it. Find the little things in there that make it worth it and, and, and just power through because it's something you got to do anyway. And if there's anything you're doing, you're always learning, you're always building, you're always taking something from anything, good, bad, or whatever. And I'll tell you what, the stuff that's bad that is the stuff that's actually going to build you up into something stronger and better because you're dealing with something that's that's not fun you know that not a lot of people deal with but you got to deal with it and that's just making you stronger that's just making you better that's just building you up you're going to have a little bit of armor on you that nobody else has because you went through something that not everybody gets to go through a lot of us do but not everybody and it's just gonna forge you for the battlefield in the future. So, you know, don't look at these things like 
it's the end of my life, this is terrible, it's over. There's stepping stones, you know. I said there's speed bumps. I said there's speed bumps the other day. Life looks at us and they say, this guy's moving too fast, he's having too good of a time, let's give him some speed bumps so he'll slow down and smell the roses. But you know what, I think I was wrong. I don't think there's speed bumps. I think those things get thrown out and it's trouble, you know, it's trouble. But they become the stepping stones that we use to jump to the next chapter of our life, the next big thing. So use these things and jump because you don't want to just sit there on that thing. No, you got stuff to do. We all got stuff to do. Don't sit there and pout. Jump, you know, jump. Anyway, what else? We had the, the mad panel. I really enjoy the mad panels. I may or may not have shed a couple of tears at some of those. We won't talk about that, but I, I do enjoy the mad panels. I, I don't, I might even sign up for one later this month. You know, give them, give them that 25 bucks and go listen to somebody's story. Love people's stories. Um, the mad panel, the classes, the P-test, the probation. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Don't forget the community service. Don't forget it. That's something else too. Like, and they got other things you can do. Like, don't just go to Goodwill or the Ark and let them guys like talk you into cleaning bathrooms and sorting through all that disgusting stuff. Yuck, you know. You have other options. Talk to your talk to your community service person, like if you get a special one, but it's probably just going to be your probation officer. Talk to them. Like I made uh, these walking sticks uh, for Jefferson County. Yeah, it was. It was Jefferson County once, and 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 it was this really cool, like you know, one guy for his community service. They told me he had to go out and pick up all these sticks. And he did, he picked up all these long walking sticks, these raw sticks, and he just brought them to the person and the guy gave him X amount of hours for that. And then he gave me these sticks and he says, you need to, to wood burn them. You need to wood burn like, you know, stuff related to Jefferson County. And uh, I wish I still had like a picture or something. I think it's on another phone, but they were dope. Like I'm quite the artiste. But uh, I made some really cool sticks and like I had a blast doing it. Like I wanted to keep them so bad, but uh, you know, I had to turn them in, made three of them. And uh, the, uh, the person, you know, that, that got them said that they went to this, you know, group of uh, people that were going to do the hike and pick up some trash and do some stuff. So it worked out good. I was real happy. But uh, you don't have to just do, you know, the worst of the worst community service. Ask them, they might have something more fun, more around what you can do, you know? And you know, the worst that anybody can say in these situations is no, you know? They might say yes. They might say, how about something else? But uh, no is the worst. And then, you know, if you gotta go push them up somewhere, you gotta go push them up somewhere. You know, not a big deal. But anyway, guys, that's about everything that I went through, I think, once I was uh, doing the probation. And it did last about two years. And you know, it really wasn't that bad. You don't get anything once you're done. No pat on the back, no nothing. Just this like, this weight lifted off your shoulders and like this, this disbelief in your eyes that like, I don't have to call that number. I don't have to, I don't have to go to another one of those meetings. I, I don't have to go sort clothes at the Goodwill. Like once you are all done with all of your stuff, you're gonna feel so good. You're gonna feel, it, it's, hey, hey, I can't even explain it. You know what it is. It's kind of like that first one. It's like the first one. It feels that good, but better, free. But just remember, once you're free and uh, you, your buddies, somebody society starts grabbing at you and they're trying to pull you back into the fray tell them to fuck off you're not going back in 
Love you guys.